A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who takes great delight in his commandments. His descendants shall be powerful on earth. A generation of the upright will be. his affairs with justice. He will never be moved. Forever shall the just be
nos roubes com. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. Verbum Domini. August the 10th, at one time, at least in the region of Assisi, <laughs> was the feast day of St. Clair of Assisi. And the reason why it is not a, now it's on the 11th, as far as I can tell, and I'm no expert, is that San Rufino, who was the bishop, who uh, is the original patron of Assisi, had his feast day on that day. And as uh, Claire, although the moon to the sun of St. Francis of Assisi, uh, as her glory uh, covered up the glory of San Rufino, she eventually uh, came back to the actual day of her death, August 11th. But for that time, she shared this feast, or her feast covered up that of St. Lawrence, who is the early deacon of the church and one who, uh, as the legend has it, was uh, toasted on a gridiron over a fire. And um, he w was uh, indeed uh, a well done, good and faithful servant of the Lord. So. When our Lord says to us in the gospel, and we struggle with this, especially as uh, quote unquote moderns, is this idea of, of hatred of self. And so we, uh, our Lord in no way means uh, this, this uh, type of self-hate or self-loathing that often first comes to mind, uh, at least you know, make first come to mind, and I hope not. And we can look at this in a broader perspective, as we always should, because we are in John chapter 12, and we are, we are in this precious moment between the coming of Jesus into Jerusalem, when even the stones will cry out, Hosanna to he who comes in the name of the Lord, and John 13, when Jesus begins, his own, loving his own who are in the world and loving them to the end. That is to the very depths, the utmost, that there's no more radical way because God would have figured out, not that he figures out anything, <laughs> God would know a more perfect radical way to give himself, but he gave himself in this way. That is divesting himself of glory and getting down at the feet of his disciples that he as a grain of wheat dying and washes the feet of his disciples. And this is the father who honors him above all. So just after this, some heard thunder, some heard God, as that it says, I will honor, I will honor you, the father, and will honor the son, and he will exalt, honor him again. Okay, so, so this aspect of self-hatred or self or of love of life. John chapter 12, we begin again 
and Mary, the, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, she who is so grateful for the raising of Lazarus back to life, this, this act which pushes uh, towards the very passion of, of Jesus in the, the gospel of, according to John, that she breaks the alabaster jar and wash and anoints the feet of Jesus and dries them with her hair. So that all that we thought was precious in this life, if we saw anything apart from Jesus and from the love of Jesus, then in the midst of receiving the love of God and seeing how deep the love of God is, especially in the Passion and the Most Holy Eucharist, that when we come before the altar and it, it stupefies our mind because it, it still is so humble that God, this is the, the great gift of God enduring in our life and the gift of love. How this love, which humbles itself even unto death, death on a cross, that our response to is humbling ourselves before God and, and consecrating ourselves, giving ourselves, just as he said, this is my body given for you, we respond in kind. This is my body. This is ultimately your body. <laughs> you created me. You gave me an existence. Uh, you know, and yes, I, uh, as a cheerful giver, give myself um, of those good things that you have grown, that you have given self food and care for the body, which is the, in the proper sense. Uh, and I give this all back to you for it to be just as our, the sacrifice of the bread and wine, you know, the grapes and grain scattered on the hillsides are made one. So the very grains of our life scattered on the hillside of the week are all gathered into the Eucharistic uh, offering and, and that we ourselves would be transformed into the very image and likeness of the Son who gives himself as the, the ultimate cheerful giver. You know, um, some of the, the most beautiful crucifixes and, and the, the metaphor that they can be, because it's against, it's a reality, <laughs> a display of the reality, and yet that there's crucifixes, just as the San Damiano crucifix, he's pierced on the side, but he's alive, his eyes are, are open and looking out upon the world, uh, that some have a smile. So uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola himself uh, had a very beautiful Jesus of the smile, this crucifix in his, his ancestral home. Um, so that we experience and know the love of God for us, and this allows us to change the way we even look at our own life. It's not a self, in fact, when we know ourselves loved and affirmed, and God himself is love, that we don't have the same struggles that we might have should we have, for whatever reason, missed missed out. As, as it says in John Paul II said, very often quoting the council, um, something about love, <laughs> that, that uh, man, Christ reveals man fully to himself, and something about love, uh, that without love, man remains, man and woman, we remain a mystery to ourselves, that we have to encounter love for all of this, including the sufferings of the cross, our own daily cross, to be converted into life. Um, so, to be cheerful in the love of God, knowing God's love for us, and then lo his love for all, and then being converted in that love, that self-offering, which will also make us forgetful of self, 
and desire to give ourselves more, uh, more Christ-like, you know, in a way that gives, uh, we give ourselves in love for our neighbor, for love of every uh, person we might meet.